There is another important progression to consider when teaching phonics. I have already looked at the first two stages of this progression. Vocabulary, of course, needs to be constantly enhanced through readers, games, and listening and writing activities, which I will look at in other videos. So, what's the next step after words? Sentences. As soon as we can, we need to put the words into simple sentences. Even if it is just something very simple, like, it's a dog, rather than just dog. The children can read sentences like this while playing games, or through simple readers. There are some phonics programs that use unnatural sentences just because they are phonically regular, such as Tom and Ted sat, or something like that. I think at the sentence stage, we can do better than this. When we put words into sentences, I think it is important that the sentences are natural and meaningful. It's also a good idea to introduce a question form as early as possible. I generally introduce a question form like, what is it? or what's she doing? before the sentences, it's a dog, or she's reading, so that the children can ask me questions, or ask each other questions instead of me asking them. And they also read and write these questions. When we introduce question forms, or make sentences more natural, we need to sometimes introduce phonically irregular words. In the early stages, before the children are confident readers, I think we should minimise the number of irregular words, but it sometimes can't be avoided. For example, the word what in what is it is phonically irregular. If we do introduce an irregular word, it is important that the children see the word a lot. The children will be using a different reading strategy to read phonically irregular words that depends on seeing words a lot. In the early stages of a phonics program, introducing phonically irregular words without making sure that the children see them a lot can hurt the children's confidence when reading and writing. As soon as the children move beyond very basic sentences like, what is it? It's a dog. The children can personalise sentences when speaking, reading and writing. This means they make sentences about themselves, their family, their friends, popular characters, famous people they are interested in, a puppet in the classroom, or anything or anybody that the children have an emotional connection with. What's the next step after sentences? What do you think? I think it is paragraphs and dialogues. I mean the term paragraphs loosely. I don't think the children need to properly structure a paragraph yet. At this stage, a paragraph is really just a series of connected sentences. Something like this. Notice that this is phonically regular, except for words that they see a lot, like I. It is achievable. The children can read it, and it may contain some new words that they can decode. They can also personalise it. A child can say, Hello, I'm Jinsuk, I'm a girl, I'm not a banana, I'm not a table, I'm not a monster, etc. The more serious children may use more serious words, and the less serious children may try to give crazy examples, which is great. They can also write a personalised version of the paragraphs, possibly for homework. So in this way, starting from a phonically regular reading passage, all four skills are integrated. They are hearing, speaking, reading and writing. And this leads to deeper learning. Dialogues can also be built around whatever the children are ready to read. Something like this. 
These kinds of dialogues can be used in many communication activities which are not relevant to this workshop on phonics. But one thing that is relevant is using the dialogue as a reading activity. One way of approaching the dialogue is for the children to first read it. They decode it and guess words that they don't know, and then do a communication activity with it. Reading the dialogue first, trying to puzzle it out, and maybe struggling with it a bit, and possibly getting some help from the teacher's hints, but finally succeeding by decoding it, can give the children a sense of ownership. At first, they didn't understand, but they tried, and they succeeded. The feeling of ownership they get from this is likely to carry over to the communication activities and make them feel more involved in the activities. An alternative, which uses the same kind of idea, is for the children to read songs before singing them. In the same way as with dialogues, the children first read the song, try to decode it, maybe struggle with it a bit, but succeed. And the feeling of ownership they get from this can also lead to them being more engaged when singing the song, and even after the song when they are doing follow-up activities. Here's an example. It may often be necessary to rewrite the words of a song a bit, or even a lot, so as to make it more decodable for the children. So what's the next step? I think it is finally reading passages leading into stories. I don't mean we can't use stories before this, but the ones before this that are decodable tend to be very simple. One kind of story that is often used when learning phonics is where the story is used for reinforcing or learning particular phonics families. Here's an example. This story is used for the R and OW phonics families, so it contains many examples of words from these phonics families. There are many phonics readers like this that have very short passages and only contain a few examples of words from a phonics family. But I think it is a lot more effective to have reading passages like in this example, where there are many words from those families. These kinds of readers are not just for reading words the children already know. There may be words in the story that the children don't know yet. After they decode them, they will probably wonder what they are and the teacher can give hints to help them discover the meaning. Another kind of phonics reading passage or story is one where the focus is more on context rather than particular phonics families, but which is generally appropriate for the children's English ability and where new words are decodable. This is the final stage in preparing the children to read general stories for meaning. This is an example of the kind of simple story or reading passage that can be used at first. The stories can gradually become longer and more difficult. They provide a stepping stone towards reading longer stories in books. I think it helps to bring stories to life if it is easy to personalise them, so that the reading passage doesn't just stay on the pages of the book, and it becomes as meaningful as possible for the children. In this case, the children can personalise the story by saying things like, Hello, I'm Abdul. I live in Alexandria. Alexandria is not the capital of Egypt, and so on. At first, I like to use reading passages about children from various countries around the world. One reason is that it can stimulate the children's interest in those countries, 
which can lead on to other activities and projects related to those countries. Another reason is that if we use stories that focus on normal, everyday things, not on making another country look exotically different, it encourages the children to see the children in another country as being similar to them. When they personalise the story, they are making the same kinds of sentences and saying the same kinds of things as the child in another country that they are reading about. Here is another example at a higher level. If you look at it in detail, you will see that it is decodable, except for a few very common words that the children will have seen many times by this stage. The sentences are also very personalisable. I don't mean to imply by this that all the children need to go through lots of systematic steps before they are ready to read stories where the focus is on meaningful context. They can read this kind of story whenever they are ready. I am just looking at an underlying achievable sequence that builds confidence and ensures that almost all the children, even those weaker at reading, can reach the stage of reading stories for meaning. The children can and should read as much as possible and read for pleasure using a more top-down approach at any stage of phonics if they are ready to do this. How soon they do this is related to factors like how immersed they are in English and whether they use the Roman script in their own native language. In summary, what I am suggesting is that we introduce phonics through a sequence where each step follows on naturally from the previous step. At every stage, we focus on building skills rather than on inputting bits of knowledge, and the children develop these skills through engaging activities where they learn by trial and error. In the next series of videos, I will look at a wide range of activities for learning phonics.